I'm recreating my first Suka Skull Girl painting from 2016, seven years later in 2023. Was it seven years of getting better at art or seven years of no progress? Let's see. I made the old painting on cardboard, so that's what I'll do with the new one. But first, my niece ordered a Suka Skull painting for her birthday for the second year in a row. And her favorite color is currently green. And I happened to find this turquoise green frame for free at the reuse center. So I need to make the painting fit this frame exactly, so I can give it to her framed. This is where the cardboard comes in handy, because I can just mark a few lines and cut this cardboard down to fit this frame. And we'll see at the end if the color scheme of the painting works with the color of the frame. I'm priming the cardboard with gesso and starting by painting an X on the back, because it should help the cardboard from bending too much after painting. It doesn't fully prevent the bending, but I'm hoping it helps a little. Let's make the sketch while the cardboard dries. I'm using the same reference photos as I did years ago, but making a new sketch and changing the color scheme. After the back side is dry, I'm priming the other side with white gesso twice and letting it dry for a day. I'm painting the background the same way as with the older painting, just a different color. A gradient of greenish blue, darker on the edges and lighter in the middle. I used a sponge instead of a brush, but it was still pretty rough after the first layer. It does get smoother with more layers though. Now I can transfer the sketch onto the cardboard. I'm still reusing the same five graphite papers that came in the set I bought maybe eight years ago. Unfortunately, the graphite did smudge the background a bit and erasing did not help so I need to cover up the smudges while painting. In hindsight, the lighter part in the middle of the background could have been a bit bigger, because it just gets covered by the face now. Since this is a bigger painting, I have more room for details. So the skeleton is a little more realistic looking than the old one, not a lot, just a little. I especially like the El Catrinero sculptures as inspiration. The last time I gave her a headband that didn't show her hairline and it's one of the things that I don't like in that painting anymore. So I'm ditching the headband this time and showing more hair, but still making it the same solid black color to frame the face with the high contrast of black next to white. I decided to simplify some things around the head to make it the focal point, so instead of the flower bouquet, she's just holding one big sunflower. I layer different shades of green for the leaves in the background, and I'm trying one stroke painting for the yellow flowers on the flower crown. I did something funny with the leaves the last time. I painted them a lighter green and then left the leaf veins that color and painted darker green around them, like negative space painting. And the result was kind of strange, so I'm not doing it this time. The roses were a bit of a struggle, maybe because I painted them without a reference. So I ended up going over them multiple times, adding more strokes, more colors, more shading, more highlights, and you'll see how they turned out in the end. I thought the earrings were too simplified the last time, so I added more parts to them. The inspo for them came from a Maria Di Mova digital painting. The color scheme I decided on was blue, green, yellow and pink. I did blue shading for the face and the skeleton this time to match the background. And I did change the decorations on the face. I did a diamond on the forehead instead of the flower, blue under eyes to make it look like crying, I suppose. I made the eyelids stand out from the black eye sockets the last time by making them a bright blue. This time I thought I'd let the eyes sink into the eye sockets more with a less contrasting grey. I thought some metallic paint would look nice for shiny details, so I used gold paint for the earrings. I wanted each color to repeat in multiple parts of the painting to make it look harmonious. The yellow though wasn't really working for the flower on the jaw, so I painted pink over it. 
I had some cold paint left over after doing the earrings, so I used it in the details around the painting, like in the sunflower, the eyes, the smaller flowers, and the color of the shirt or the dress. Even though sugar skulls as an idea seem kind of morbid, that's not their point in the Day of the Dead tradition. They're meant to celebrate the life of deceased family members. Hence all the flower decorations and bright colors. I'm leaving some areas less detailed, with less shading and more solid colors, like the leaves in the background and the dress or the shirt to draw more attention to the face. I let the background color show through in between the bones, because I realized if I paint it black, it just merges in with the hair. Not sure if it's 100% finished like this. I looked at the painting through the mirror. I did notice the eyes, the jaw and the flower crown are a bit lopsided. I didn't catch that in the sketch, so I had to try to make it less obvious in the painting by the placement of the rose leaves and by altering the line of the jaw and the eyeliner or lash line a bit. I think I will varnish this, but not yet because I want to get it scanned. It's too big for my scanner, but I have an idea I want to try and luckily I have time before my niece's birthday to do so. I just wanted to get the painting done in time for Halloween and the Day of the Dead. This video does spoil her present though, so I'm hoping she doesn't see this. A word of warning, cardboard paintings do deteriorate over time, especially depending on how you store them. I didn't frame the old Sukaskal painting, but I've kept it on display, just leaning against the wall. Well, sometimes it falls in the crack between the wall and the dresser, and now the paint is peeling off in the corners. I have to say the old painting looks kind of embarrassing to me now next to this new one, even though it must have been one of my favorites at the time. Just goes to show that you might feel like you're not making progress, but when you look back on your old art far enough, you'll see it. They kind of look like a little sister and a big sister though, and I think it looks pretty good in the green frame too. But I also repainted this sugar skull girl from 2018 and ran into some issues, which you can see in this video here. See you there!